TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me is the video. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Don't forget we do have Patreon where we post five days per week. And we also, when we do go live on Twitch, you can lock in, man. Usernames right on the bottom of the screen, also located in the description. It's the links. This is best ever food review show. London three dollar versus three hundred and sixty five dollar British breakfast. Beans should be banned. That's a, that's 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 a tough way to start it, my boy. This is this used to literally be one of my favorite shows on YouTube. Still top five. This is the most expensive breakfast in London. It's a breakfast sandwich that comes in at over $370. By the end of this video, I'll let you know why and if it's worth it. Today, I'm on a mission to explore the world of British breakfast, trying out three different plates with three different price tags. This is the start of an epic day. And by the end of this video, you'll witness the most luxurious breakfast money can buy, at least here in London. For most of the people, it seems expensive. That looks so nasty. Let me just be real, this looks disgusting. But for some of the people, it's day-to-day -day life. That's the day-to-day -day life I aspire. I've never had caviar. I are too. But first, something much, much more affordable. In fact, this breakfast costs only a few dollars. This is my first day in London. This is gonna be my first meal in London. Welcome. We've come to London's iconic Polo Bar. Open all day, every day. Serving up the best British diner food. In the mm. Never heard of this place. Ask British cuisine has been judged for being boring, sometimes bland. Yeah, I've come here to London to bust. What was that? A, gl a, 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 a glizzy with all the toppings? <laughs> those stereotypes. Thank you. And I'm doing it by starting with the iconic dish known as beans on toast. Start by toasting up a thick, wholesome slice of sourdough bread. Why do people here love beans so much for breakfast? I don't know, but every... Let's be real. I feel like I'm already doing the debunking of the myths of boring, bland food for the UK on TikTok. TikTok's down in the description. I just tried out um, afternoon tea. They got a place out here, tried it. It was good. Single one of our breakfasts is served with beans. Right. Like the Italians grow up on pasta, so I think the English grow up on beans. <laughs> Once the bread has become toast, apply a layer of butter. There's a little bit of synergy with the American diners because obviously breakfast is big. Another thing that we do a lot of are, are the American style pancakes. You stole our beans, we stole your pancakes. I'm sorry, we do not eat beans. <laughs> no, but breakfast beans. No. Finally, dump on a... No, yeah, we don't. We do not eat this. Um, in the hood, they eat these a lot with, with, um, with hot dogs. Hot dogs and beans, mix them together. I, 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 as an adult, I hadn't had these beans until I started trying British food. Generous portion of beans. We don't do anything with them. They're just as they come. In the camp? Yeah. Heinz? Of course. Do they make the best beans? Yeah, definitely. In 1901, the owner of the Heinz Food Company, Henry Heinz, introduced his canned beans to the UK. Advertised as a convenient, affordable, and energy-packed meal, it became an instant hit. Now, it's a breakfast staple. So, beans on toast. Yeah, no cap, they do have the best beans, Heinz. It's the sauce. It's the sauce and the, the consistency of the sauce that it's in. That's what make it the best for me. That an affordable $3.14 a plate. Let's give it a shot. $3.14, that seems a little expensive. I'm not going to lie. Look at those steaming beans. May I some steaming beans? In just a moment, we're going to indulge on this indulgence. But first, I want to talk about you. Tom, you are a taxi driver here in London. Yeah, that's my profession. Gold standard. Finest taxi driver in the world. Nice. Meet Tom. He's taking a break from his usual work as a London cabbie slash YouTuber to guide me through the ins and outs of British breakfast. I'm that around the world this is one of the hardest places to become a taxi driver yeah it's a real old tradition that dates back to like the 1800s here becoming a taxi driver is intense it requires memorizing the entire city map and passing a series of tests over a two to four year period has anybody wow. ever asked you where they could get a good beans on toast you yeah. this is our comfort food should we give it a shot oh we're missing something. But before we find out what we're missing, a quick word from our sponsor. Is it Worcestershire sauce or is it or is it uh, brown sauce? Sponsor, better help. With help and keep in with masters and go during season. Better start your journey. This was made for beans on toast. 
What is it? Oh, Worcestershire yeah, sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Try sauce. it without, and then I'd encourage you to stab a little bit of that on. What I like too is you're not eating even some crazy British version of beans. It's Heinz. That's an American company. Cheers. Cheers. How you feel about it? Mm -hmm. I see you eat some weird stuff now. Don't. I like it. I'm liking it. I respect it. It is what it is. We're not reviewing five-star filet mignon right now. What's good is that even if the toast is a little bit burnt, it's just get that sogginess of the beans. What I do like about it is they put a lot of sugar in the beans. The starchy kind of syrup of the beans, like you said, is saturated into the bread, making it kind of chewy. It feels like dorm food. It's exactly that. If you went around to a mate's house, if you're a bachelor, and you're like, oh, mate, what you got in the cupboard? What can you do me? Beans on toast? Sorted. Time to add Worcestershire. In, in, in the UK... If somebody offered me this, it's acceptable. I'll eat it. A ferment. If somebody offered me this in America, I look at them like they're stupid. Are you dumb? <laughs> no, I don't want to be. Did condiment made but from vinegar, case. molasses, anchovies, tamarind, and spices. Where'd you bring that from? My boy specifically for this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's kind of a... It adds another layer of flavor. Sour note to it now. Yeah. So we have the sweetness, we have the saltiness, and a little bit of sourness. It feels like a well-rounded... How do you pronounce it? What's just a steer saw? Meal you would buy on food stamps. Well, you say food stamps. The actual reasoning why beans on toast is such a popular meal in Britain is it comes from rationing in World War II. We've loved it ever since, basically. The British bean obsession doesn't end with beans on toast. Here, you can also order this loaded egg, cheese, and bean sandwich. But there's also the iconic full English breakfast, well, which is English. what we're trying next. What? Oh, you're trying it all, okay. What is the occasion that people would be eating an English breakfast? It doesn't seem like something that people would eat every day. It's not, it's a treat. Meet Dean, general manager of 3SP Restaurant on the main floor of the Five Star South Place Hotel. Hotel. Every now and then I've got a group of friends from the army days and we'll meet once a month and we'll find a good breakfast spot where we'll get a full English breakfast so we call it belly buster. I don't want like I don't see this is too fancy though for me like give me it all on one plate make it look sloppy. I'm good. The full English breakfast is a hearty feast rooted in the 19th century industrial revolution. It was designed as a power packed meal to jumpstart the day for laborers. I'd like to one by one go through each food item that's on that plate. Let's start with eggs. Going with two options sunny side up eggs and Dean's personal favorite poached eggs. That poached egg breaks up and you've got a good quality egg. There. Never had poached eggs on a full English. I'm pretty sure y'all do it, but like I've never even knew it was an option, a valid option. And it's orange and it glistens. I'm so hungry right now. Hello. All right, next food. Pork sausage, really important, goes back centuries. We boil them first and then we just finish them off in a little bit of a oily pan. Our bacon, we eat. So that's the trick. Boil it first and then put it in the oven. That is not British bacon. What is this? Slightly different here as well. Most Americans like really crispy bacon. We don't. Londoners typically prefer back bacon for breakfast. Back bacon is a cut that includes a portion of the loin from the back of the pig. But here, they're serving what the Brits call streaky bacon, a more familiar option for international travelers. Be I don't want streaky bacon in it, <laughs> full English. Give me back bacon. Because it's a hotel, we try and put it in a little bowl, but then if people don't want it, they can separate it. Where if you go to one of the local cafes here in London, they put it on the plate and you've got no option but to have the tomato juice flourishing through the rest of the plate. Let's That's what I want. Talk about the black pudding. Okay, black pudding. It's not a pudding at all. Black pudding is in fact a sausage, dyed black through the use of pork blood. To make it, start by blending oats, pork fat, and onions. Then mix the blended ingredients with pork blood, flour. When you show it like this, it looks so disgusting. Just, I like black pudding. I am a fan of it. I don't like white pudding. Black pudding is definitely better than white pudding. Or milk and other seasonings. That sounds gruesome to a lot of people and puts a lot of people off. But this was a byproduct of our animal culture. Stuff this mixture into a plastic casing and boil to cook it through. It's actually really very good for you. If you think about it, it's just it's an oat cookie that's black. That's a great perspective, a cookie. Before serving, the black pudding is sliced and made crispy under the broiler. The final steps, deep frying some hash browns, then broiling up some tomatoes and mushrooms and assembling the dish. Mm -mm. Not those tomatoes, no. Served in a hotel restaurant, the English breakfast here is tailored to international guests with a posh touch. And I prefer canned tomatoes. I don't like the whole cut like A that. bit more premium than you'll find at Blue Collar. Give me this, give me this. Is this fried bread or toast? I would like fried bread, these type of mushrooms, 
And I want canned tomato, not that one. Cafes. In order to get the full, full English experience, I want to learn some British slang. Right now, I'm absolutely Hank Marvin. I'm absolutely yeah. Hank Marvin? Hank Marvin. What's that mean? What the hell is that? It means starving. <laughs> this is uh, a cup of Rosie Lee. Rosie Lee, rhyming slang for mother Exactly. So there is one word I want to talk to you about. What I'm told is here, it's almost like a term of endearment. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not there yet. No. I'm talking about the word c Yeah, 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 yeah. You're on to something. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've never heard a word even... I've never heard that word used until I start watching British stuff. I was like, wow, they really be using that word. That's that's what... That's a little bit vulgar, ain't it? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Is that something you would call your mates, your friends? Closer mates. You can call me a <laughs> if you want. Nah, no, it's not that. We're not yeah. close enough yet. <laughs> Let's get back to the breakfast. This looks amazing. This is the start of an epic day. Where should we start? Firstly. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it, but only because I'm afraid you'll call me a You almost make like a little mini sandwich on your forks. You go, I'll have a little bit of bread. I'll have a little bit of sausage. A little bit of egg. We're making a breakfast kebab. I never even thought of eating it like that. I'd just be eating Mmm, that's tasty. That first bite is incredible. I'm coming around on the bean, but I can see why- That's not enough beans. Why oh, you'd want to mix everything together. You're getting a little bit of that crunchy bread or toast, which is kind of absorbing some of these flavors too. Yeah. The sausage is nice, heavy, and greasy. If you're having a big day out in London, you would get one of these down you in the morning and it would sustain you for like most of the day. These look beautiful. I love a good poached egg. Oh, I mean, look at that dark orange hue just leaking out onto the toast. Toss some beans and ketchup on there. Cut a little bit of mushroom off and chuck that on as well. That mushroom the yolk inside that poached egg is amazing. It's so satisfying, especially if you had a hangover. What's so cool about it as well is the cultural identity of eating a fry up for full English in this way. We'd be conversing about the night before. Oh man, you went in that club. Ah, oh, that's where you've got that. The last thing I want to try right here, the black pudding. When I was speaking to Dean earlier. It's going to be surprisingly good. You're going to like it. He said this is like eating an oatmeal cookie. Oatmeal cookie? Not sure about that. It doesn't really have a bloody taste. You like it? Taste to it. And it's cooked like nice and solid, like it's a bit soft, but it's got a great savory flavor, a nice bouncy texture from the oatmeal inside. I like it. Do you think most Americans, there you go. I told you. Americans would be open to taking a bite of this? I think they should, because it's not as bad as it sounds. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. My fault. That's the thing, though. We going off straight looks and what is in it and what it sounds like. But it's not bad. It's good. I like it. No, you guys made it sound good. Black pudding? We love pudding. This was an excellent meal. We're at a hotel, five star. This is 18 pounds, but it's a lot of food. It's a great price because it's not just breakfast. Like, this just sets you up for the whole day. So you don't think it's on the high side? Not at all, especially for the... I think an English fry up, or fry up, aren't they like seven bucks normally? Like at a regular place? Eight bucks, ten dollars at most, ten pounds? Quality that you'll get in the ingredients they put into this. Well, listen. From here, we're having a classic breakfast, but with something definitely not classic put on top of it. Have you ever had caviar? I have, yes. On your breakfast? Not on breakfast, no. Exactly. Wow. Thomas offered to drive me to our most expensive breakfast location in his very own cab. You ready to run? Let's do it. I'm afraid of that. For me, I'm happy to save a few pounds because for our next meal, I'm gonna need it. Hey Tom, this is terrifying. I literally don't hear anything from the front. I just hear you through the speaker. I mean, you can turn me off if you like. That's what some posh people like to do. Well, I'd rather turn you off than turn you on. <laughs> I'm feeling like my wallet is heavy and soon my wallet will be light. Most likely. We've arrived at the Caviar Bar, a restaurant completely obsessed with caviar. From sandwiches to cocktails, they- That's that looks nasty. That legitimately looks like I'm not a fan of whatever he's selling right here. I don't even think you could convince me to eat this. This does not look good to me. Put this luxurious ingredient on. Is this a Bloody Mary or some Kool Aid? What is this? A Slurpee with. Caviar? Everything. We believe caviar should be part of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Snacks. There is always the right time for the caviar. You have a few different levels of caviar here. For the most expensive one that you're selling here, 250 grams of royal beluga caviar. Just this. 
Correct. This small tin is priced at an outrageous $1,600. And here's why. Caviar comes from sturgeon, and this particular species requires the fish 20 years to mature and produce eggs. Not only that, but unlike chickens, each fish can only provide eggs once for a single harvest. For most of the people, it seems expensive, but for some of the people, it's day-to-day -day life. That's the day-to-day -day life I aspire to. You will get there one day, I'm sure. Thank you. Our final luxury He's definitely there. His breakfast includes two courses, building up to an extravagant sandwich featuring the royal Like look, they look like black eyed peas. Mini black eyed peas. Beluga caviar. But before that Eggs Benedict, crowned with eggs from a fish. Start with English muffin. Is eggs Benedict a, a, a UK thing, a British thing? I don't think I've ever had eggs Benedict. Oh wait, we're in England. I think they just call them muffins. Give those muffins a slice and lightly toast in brown butter. Would the boss notice if a couple tins went missing? We do daily stock take just to make sure no one touched our fridge. I don't see any padlock on the door though. I guess I wouldn't be very elegant. Oh. That's not an English muffin, that's a crumpet. Isn't that a crumpet? There literally is a lock on the door. Next, poach plump chicken eggs in simmering water. That is our entry level dish. How much will that cost? That will set you down £79.50. What? $98 for eggs Benedict? <clears throat> It's not that bad, it's over $100, I think. It's just breakfast. Now, the most crucial component of Eggs Benedict, the hollandaise sauce. In a pot, whisk together egg yolks, salt, pepper, and clarified brown butter. The final step, plating. We are going to use a couple of baby spinach for a bit of texture, which we are going to drizzle with olive oil. Benedict. Now, we are going to add our poached egg on top of the muffin, and we are going to add our hollandaise sauce. We are going to finish the dish with our own Ossietra caviar. I'm very intrigued to see how this Minus the caviar, it looks good. will actually match with these breakfast dishes or that flavor of the caviar will be completely lost and destroyed. Perfect challenge accepted. No, I have a serious question. If anybody's really watching this, like, tell me in the comments if this is a UK dish. Because I, I never knew. Because I'm, I'm going to try it then if it is. Those are some interesting looking beans. <laughs> yeah, listen, we have surpassed the world of beans and we've moved into a completely different dimension. This plate right here, $100. It's kind of blowing my mind already. So Too this is the mid-level caviar that they're selling here. But right here on the Bloody Mary, this is the most affordable caviar, the Royal Byrie. The Royal Byrie, their most affordable caviar, costs about $20 for 10 grams. It comes from seven-year-old sturgeon and I... It's like they trapping, they trapping caviar out here. I had a taste earlier. Salty, slightly briny. Um, County line for caviar. That's the... I like it. Do you like it? Yeah. No. It's good. I have no benchmark to compare it against. Yeah, well, that's our starting point. So it should apparently go up from here. There are so much eggs on here. It's quite a lot. When you say 30 grams, it doesn't seem like you'd get much. No. Oh, there we go. Minus the caviar. The holidays is so rich and buttery. Oh my God. I'm getting just a touch of brininess from the caviar, but a little bit, it's getting lost in the sauce. It is quite an adequate replacement for that ham. It fits really well with all the other flavors. Yeah. It doesn't like cut above it. I thought that was delicious. Something new. Wait, it's so regularly is ham on there? Not a very bold flavor, but it's a nice, gentle, well-balanced bite. I'm worried this is gonna grow on me. It's dangerous. Every day breakfast is no longer gonna be the same. I mean, this is like what the Prince of Saudi Arabia- I'm ready to try this, God damn it. Yeah. eats for breakfast every day. Why would you not? Yeah, he can't be eating cornflakes. Have to pour his own milk. Oh. I'm sold. How many jars of caviar are you buying then? I took a loan out just for this scene, actually. <laughs> Tom's Royal British Manor masks it well, but I can tell he's not impressed. So, for our final round, I'm going for broke. And I mean that quite literally. I'm pretty sure this will be the most- that raw salmon? Most expensive sandwich I've ever had. Which is, I mean, nothing wrong with it, it's just- so much of it. Certainly for me, I think even if we move to the decimal point, one place. First of all, we take our butter croissant, we cut that in a half. We are going to add our creme fraiche with shallots and black pepper. We're going to add some spinach, dress the spinach with a drizzle of olive oil. Then we are going to use our lightly smoked salmon and we are going to get generous. To ensure a nice uniform flavor. We are going to spread the 50 gram of beluga caviar all across the croissant. So just... That's just... That's...
Mm. For the caviar alone right here, for the 50 grams, it is 260 pounds. In dollars, I don't know, let's put it on screen. Boom. So, pretty expensive. There's a lot going on here, and I'm just really curious to know how this interacts with the other flavors that are going on here, like the salmon. I'm gonna put the lid on top, I'm gonna push it down a bit. They bought two of them. They didn't share it, they bought two. And I'm gonna treat it like this is just another Tuesday. This is the rich life, Tom. This is awesome. But it might suck. Let's eat it to find out. I bet you the croissant look, the croissant look fire. Mm. How is it? Good. That's really good. The salmon has a strong taste. The creme fraiche with the salmon, classic pairing, tastes delicious together. Yeah, even the croissant, I didn't really know what to expect in this format, but it's not. What's creme fraiche? See, listen, this is above my pay grade. I... Going everywhere, this is still quite manageable. Oh, this is crazy. This is way better than Tesco sandwiches. I think the other thing that's also frying me as well is it's presumably the quality of the salmon. All the ingredients are delicious. I would say the caviar isn't super present. You know, it doesn't offer a strong, potent flavor, but it's just like a gentle saltiness, a smoothness. It's oily. The whole sandwich is- It's making my stomach bubble, honestly. Just the sight of what I'm watching. The caviar, they keep showing it up close and personal. It's making my stomach hurt is very rich. Yeah, there's that lingering kind of like saltiness and strong flavors in the mouth. I'm grateful that I tried it, you know? Yeah, this is a real once in a lifetime experience, man. I really thought all the flavors came together very well. They've filled a flipping breakfast sandwich with caviar and the result, I like it. Yeah, I don't know how many people can attest they've had caviar for breakfast. Now that we've been to three breakfast locations, the next thing to do is to decide which one was the most profound for our pound. Oh, that's a good one. Today we had breakfast at three different locations. Our first breakfast, beans and toast, cost this much money. Our second breakfast, the full English breakfast cost this much. I would go for the full English, but like not at such a posh place. Just give me like at a regular diner. I'm cool. Much money. And at our third location, we had two different things. Eggs Benedict, which cost this much, and a nice salmon sandwich, which cost this much. Altogether, costing this much. My question to you is which location, which breakfast gave you the most bang for your buck? Let's hear it. It's got to be beans on toast. I'm a simple guy, working class. That takes me right back to my roots, having cool. beans on toast with my dad on a really Saturday good. morning. Yeah, sorry, son, I'm a real cheap date. You don't have to be sorry about anything. I love your point of view. Culturally, I appreciated the beans on toast, but if I had to choose one that gave me the most bang for my buck, it was one particular food that is the Eggs Benedict with caviar on top. It's not cheap, but it's within the range of something that's realistic for someone to try once in their lifetime. It was a unique and delicious experience. So for me, that specific dish gave me the most bang for my buck. I'm running on a bean. Nah, I would probably go for, like I said, full English. But let me know yours in the, in the comments, man. And answer my question, please. TLO, leave a like, comment, I'm done.